Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. It is uh, our Tuesday talk with God. I uh, pray that all of you are well and uh, in sound and strong mind. Pray that your family is healthy. I pray that uh, you survived the night without interruption. I'm grateful for how God has uh, kept his hand over your life and your destiny. I'm appreciative that his grace is greater than all of your bad decisions. Every Tuesday morning at 7.30, I'm meeting you right here uh, for our prayer. I uh, ask that you'll do me a favor, tag somebody, tell somebody, text somebody uh, that we are on live on all of our platforms. Tag, text, and tell uh, somebody you know. 2,020 years later, I am of the mind that God still answers prayer. I uh, am in the midst of a series called 365. As you very well know, there are 365 days in a year. Uh, and what I believe is that God in one day is going to undo everything that has happened in the last year. 365. I want you to type that on your screen. 365. Think about what it is that you have endured, what it is that you have conquered, and what it is that you have suffered in the last year. I want you to come and believe by faith that in one day, God can completely turn that around. We begin revival on tonight, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. We are in revival. Uh, tonight, uh, my baby sister, Ja'Kalen Carr, will be our guest psalmist, our guest uh, preacher, presenter, uh, expositor will be uh, Dr. Jamon Glenn. Uh, on tomorrow night, uh, all the way from Brooklyn, New York, Darius Nixon will be with us as well as the vocal stylings of Stout uh, by way of uh, Connecticut. And then on Thursday night is the big closeout. And we're going to have, um, uh, for Thursday night, we will have Tolan Morgan and uh, Miranda Curtis. I'm excited about it. I want you to be a part of it. I don't want you to miss it. I I've been burdened with a word uh, that I wanted to give you on this day in route to prayer. And I wanted you to write it down. Here is the word that God gave to me to give to all of you. Here's the word. I want you to write it down. Indefatigable. Indefatigable. I give it to you again. Sound it out. You can hear it. Let's go back to our hooks on hooked on phonics. Indefatigable. It means a person persisting tirelessly, indefatigable. They will not stop. And I know your immediate mind is that what I am, that is what I am challenging and charging you to be, indefatigable. But I got on this morning. Uh, with the epiphany, the awakening, and the understanding, this is not who you should be. It's not healthy. It is not balanced. It is not what God desires for your life. Indefatigable has, in fact, been the crown above our heads in which we ought to be aspiring to, and we have been wearing it as a badge of air honor falsely. You can't just keep going. Here's something uh, that I found uh, just recently, is that most of us have four problems. I'm drafting somebody on every platform to be my secretary in this hour. We, we have four problems. We overthink, we overtrust, we overlove and we overcare. We overthink, 
we over trust, we over love, we over care. Last time, review and remember, we overthink, we over trust, we over love, we over care. We don't even realize that it has in fact wearied us to our core. We are mindful of the recharge of everything except ourselves. I drive by chance uh, an electric car and I am oh so mindful of how far it is that I can go before it is that I can charge because I know my car will just stop if in fact I go one decibel beyond the charge. So many of us, we just wanna keep going. Don't realize that we need to be charged. Every person who's team iPhone, every person who's team iPhone, I'm telling you, if they're really team iPhone, I promise you that within three feet of them is a charger. Everybody who's team iPhone, you don't leave without it. You got two in your car, one in your purse, another one in your pocket, one at your desk, one by the phone, one by the bed. Why? You want to make sure that what it is that I need is charged. Because we are so consumed on our phone having enough, our car having enough. This weekend, I went into panic uh, because um, uh, I woke up, I think Saturday morning, and my house was frigid. I mean, it was frigid. I mean, it, it, it was straight up cold Saturday morning. And uh, I couldn't understand it. I had to check my records. And in fact, yes, for y'all talk about me before you laugh at me, Yes, my bill was paid. I had paid the bill. Can I tell you what was crazy, y'all? Is I didn't know my thermostat has its own battery. The thermostat has its own battery. So the electric was coming in to uh, my home, but because the reader was not charged, it could not connect. Nothing was wrong with Georgia Power. I had allowed that which sets the temperature, that which helps read what is happening in the home had died because I never charged it. I'm preaching and I hope you all are not missing this. And all it is, I thought somebody had to come out. No, nobody has to come out. Dr. Bryant is going to be working. You just got to let it charge for three hours and everything in your house will be feeling the way it is supposed to. You've just allowed the thermometer's battery to die. I got to give you one piece of scripture. It'd be inordinate if I didn't. It would be suspect if I didn't. It's Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Here's what it says. They that wait upon the Lord, another translation, they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Now, most of us, we run and get straight to the eagles, mount up on wings as eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. That ain't where I want to go. I want to go into clause A. They that hope in the Lord, they that wait on the Lord shall renew strength. I got to arrest you with this in knowing that the people in whom the prophet is speaking to has relationship with God, but they are lost and absent of strength. Allow yourself the vulnerability to admit and to acknowledge I am not indefatigable. I get tired. And here's the thing that I had to figure out as a grown up you can be tired without being sleepy. 
Lord have mercy. Somebody write that down. I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody. You can be tired and not be sleepy. You can be tired and not yawn and not be drowsy. You can just be depleted. But you don't have anything left. Tired of focusing. Tired of having to be on point. Tired of producing. Tired, here it is. Uh, uh, somebody uh, has never heard this before. Tired of being prepared. Tired of being responsible. Tired of being the go-to. Can I help somebody? Tired of being the accountable one. Tired of always having to cajole people in the order. Tired of expected to always do that which was right in an office with people who were doing wrong. Tired. You are not indefatigable. That is not even appropriate for machines. You all, I got circle lights on in my home studio. I got circle lights on. I knew I had to do this prayer. Do you know what I do with my crazy self? All night, I charge my iPads, charge my lights, because I knew I had to produce in this moment. I didn't keep them on all night. My dear friends, you got to get to a place where you allow yourself to charge. Allow yourself to recoup. Allow yourself to get into alignment and allow yourself to get into balance. One of the peculiar giftings that God has uh, entrusted me with, uh, which is rarely seen in the 21st century church, is God has given me the unique capacity to interpret dreams. This was crazy not just mine, but other people's. Uh, in my previous charge, when I was passing in Baltimore, I used to have dream sessions. I've not yet had one in Atlanta. I'll, I'm going to do one in 2021 uh, where people can uh, come share their dreams and I'll give them uh, a word of revelation, a word of knowledge, uh, of understanding of what those dreams mean and how it applies to their life. Somehow or another, hadn't been able to function and hadn't been able to flow in it, hadn't been able to see it. And I couldn't figure out why. God, is it because I moved? I'm in a different church. I'm in a different assignment. And I didn't have the answer. Sunday, I crawled in my bed in the middle afternoon. And God just started uh, review, re revealing, not just my dreams, but he started showing me the dreams of people in my church. He started showing me the dreams of people who are in my space. He started teleporting me uh, to see people for where they were, not even necessarily physically, uh, but where they were emotionally, spiritually in their journal. He gave me such a peace and I couldn't understand why until it uh, dawned on me in the epiphany. You can't dream if you don't sleep. Did you all hear what I just said? You cannot dream if you don't sleep and you will not be able to dream until you hear the area of realm, which is the deepest area of sleep. I say this all the time in my teaching. You know you are anointed, not by your car, not by your house, not by your bank account. You know you are anointed when the enemy doesn't let you sleep. The enemy robs you of rest because he knows if you get good sleep, God will begin to reveal what he has for your life. I got to make some difficult decisions. I got to make some uh, life altering choices but I can't do it tired. I had to get the appropriate rest in order for me to see for me and to see what is around me. I've been, uh, y'all ain't gonna believe it. I, uh, I woke up, I went old school. I didn't even have, uh, I bet, I, God was just giving me pages and pages of notes of what it is that I was seeing. Here it is, he was giving me uh, just pages of stuff that I had to, 
exact that I needed to execute or what I needed to write down. And I, I, I couldn't have got it if I really believed I was indefatigable. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray here this. Not for strength. I wrote something on Twitter and Twitter almost exploded. I said on social media, what I say to you this morning, don't confuse strength for numbness. Don't confuse strength for numbness. Y'all not getting this. Let, let, let me pray. God, I come to you on this Tuesday morning asking for this, your child, to have a moment to rest, to recoup, to gather, to decompress. I pray, dear Lord, that somewhere in the span of the day, you will give them the space to breathe. I pray, dear Lord, with all that they have to juggle, all that they have to contend with, all that's on their back, all that's on their chest, all that's on their heart, all that's on their mind, take it off of them so that they might be able to breathe free. I pray for them in this moment. For those who have a rough time catching their breath while standing still. I pray for those who have heart in their pain in their chest with no heart condition. I pray, dear Lord, like Adam, who never ever said he was tired, but you forced him to sleep. I pray that tonight you will allow them to sleep so like Adam, you can pull a person out of them. Whether that person is who they are supposed to be, or pull a person out of their spirit, pull a person out of their system. God, I pray for Selah, the instruction that David gave to the musicians is the instructions I need you to give to your children. Give them a Selah moment to pause, to think, to reflect, not to strategize, not to work, not to consider, not to produce, but give them a moment to rest. I declare it so in Jesus' name, amen. You are not indefatigable. May rest fall on you today. Tonight, I hope that you'll join me for revival on the platform by which you're watching me now. We'll be live at 7.30. It's going to be an amazing night. Ja'Kalen Carr, Jamon Glenn, the presence of God at 7.30. Can I ask you to do me a favor? I want to ask every single one of you to give a gift of $12. That's all I'm asking for this morning. I want you to give a gift of $12. You can do so on uh, newbirth.org, on Givelify, Pushpay, uh, or even text to give. Uh, but ask that every single one of you uh, will give a gift of $12. God chose 12. I'm believing that God's getting ready to choose not just who's supposed to be in your life, but who is not that God is getting ready to select who you cannot follow. And he's also getting ready to designate who you're supposed to lead. I want you to give a gift of 12. I can't wait to see you on tonight. Something amazing is going to happen. And I want you to be a part of it. Please know this, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying that you get some rest. <laughs>